Here's a good question: How can you get seriously close-up pictures in your photography without spending lots of money on a dedicated macro lens? There are a few different ways, but the most popular is to try using extension tubes with your lens. Extension tubes are essentially tubes full of air, and they push your lens away from the camera's sensor, which enables you to focus much more closely than normal. Here's an example. Let's take this standard 50 mm lens, the Canon 50 mm f 1.4. It can focus as closely as 45 centimeters, which isn't really very close, giving us maximum magnification of 0.15 times. That's 15 percent of life size on your camera's sensor, so those screws aren't looking very big. Well, let's add an extension tube, this 12 mm one. It fits between the camera and your lens. Now we can get a maximum magnification of 0.39 times. That's much, much closer. With a 20 mm extension tube, you can get 0.55 times magnification, and with a 36 mm tube, you get 0.87. That's almost life size. You can even add all those extension tubes together to make one long 68 mm tube. With that length, you can get a crazy 1.5 times magnification, which is bigger than life size, and that combination is getting you even closer than any normal macro lens can. You can get expensive extension tubes like these official Canon ones with their nice build quality, or cheaper ones like the Carvey set I'm using here. So long as the tubes have electrical contacts for the lens's autofocus and aperture control. They will work exactly the same and give you exactly the same picture quality. These cheaper sets don't always have the best build quality, and occasionally you need to fiddle with the electrical contacts to make them work. But otherwise, they're fine. Let's get into the nitty gritty a little more. There are a few things to remember with extension tubes. Firstly, don't confuse extension tubes with teleconverters, which have glass elements inside them to increase your focal length. Although those also technically increase your maximum magnification somewhat. Secondly, while an extension tube lets you focus much closer to your subjects, you lose maximum focus distance too. So with an extension tube, you won't be able to focus to infinity anymore until you take it off again. Thirdly, extension tubes have a much greater effect on wide-angle lenses than they do on telephoto lenses, and they also let in less light to your camera's sensor. Again, depending on whether you're using a wide-angle or telephoto lens. So let's go into that in a little more detail for those who are interested. Firstly, magnification. You can use the equation on the right to figure out approximately. How much more magnification an extension tube will give you, depending on your lens? It actually shows that extension tubes are more effective on wide-angle lenses. So here's an example. On the top left, we have a wide-angle lens, Canon's new 24 mm f 2.8 STM Pancake. On the bottom left, we have a more telephoto lens, Canon's venerable 24 to 105 mm f 4. The 24 mm lens has a maximum magnification of 0.27 times. Well, actually, a bit more if you use it on an APS-C camera, so you can get reasonably close to your subject. The 24 to 105 mm lens has a maximum magnification of 0.23 times when you're zoomed into 105 mm, and even more on APS-C, which is almost as good. But ultimately, neither lens gets particularly close to your subject here. Well, with a 20 mm extension tube, the maximum magnification of the 24 mm lens increases massively to 1.1 times, bigger than life size. The 24 to 105 mm lens's magnification only increases to 0.43 times, which is helpful but not exactly dramatic. So we can see that extension tubes are much more effective on wide-angle lenses. The only problem is that with a wide-angle lens, the front of the lens has to be right up against your subject, so you won't have much light to work with. Bear in mind, though, the equation on the right is only a rule of thumb to help you. There are a few technical things it doesn't take into account, such as changing focal lengths as you're focusing closely or lens construction. 
Often, I've found that you're getting even closer magnification than the sums will indicate. Secondly, changes in light levels. Using an extension tube means that you get less light coming into your lens, no matter what the lens's reported aperture is on your camera. Again, there are some equations on the right to help you figure it out. Essentially, the greater the increase in magnification the extension tube gives you, the less light reaches your camera's sensor. So, if you're using extension tubes with wide-angle lens, you're going to need much longer shutter speeds or much higher ISO levels. Your camera should automatically adjust its levels to deal with this. And remember, that dark and defective aperture also counts for diffraction levels. Diffraction is what makes your images look soft at narrow apertures, and it's very noticeable in macro photography. If you're using an APS-C camera, and using extension tubes with a wide-angle lens, then you won't want to stop the lens down any narrower than f4 or f5.6, because you'll start to get some very soft pictures. It's not as bad with a more telephoto lens, you can probably stop down to about f5.6 or even f8, but diffraction really can be an enemy here. So there you go, that's much more information than you needed. Let me sum it all up. Extension tubes can yield great results, and they're just plain fun. QED